Hello everybody, this is Gail, and today I am going to attempt to make a flame cane. I had someone request this, and I gave them a suggestion, <clears throat> but then I decided I would try to do one on my own. So let me see if this is going to work. It may not. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to, again, I'm going to be using souffle clay and then Primo Black. Um, I'm going to make a Skinner blend between the yellow and the red. This is Canary, I believe. This is souffle Canary and cherry pie. And I'm going to make a Skinner blend of these two. And... I can already see that I need to trim my red, uh, yellow a little bit. I did a little bit too much of it. So let me just fold this in half and try to get about the same size. Doesn't have to be exact, but at least close to the same size. There, that'll work better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I, since I've already folded these, I'm going to flatten it out one time. And I'm going to flatten this out one time. And how did it end up being, it's the same but different. I think I need to do it this way. there. Because what you need to do is to make a triangle. And I'm going to just fold this into a triangle and cut off this end. And then I'll fold this into a triangle. Just find whichever way works the best. And trim off this end. We don't need those clays. Now, I've got two right angle triangles. So I'm going to put them together and I'm going to offset them a little bit. See how this red is sticking out a little and that yellow is sticking out. And I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to cut this off. So now we have our double thickness triangles that are pressed together. And I am going to run these through the pasta machine about 20 or 30 times. And what I'm looking for is a nice yellow, orange to red. Hopefully this will turn out well. But I'm not going to make you listen to my pasta machine because it's electric. <coughs> Excuse me. But I, I will fast forward this so you, you know, can at least see my progress. Okay, I, um... I've never tried to blend with souffle clay before, and evidently this red is rather highly pigmented. So I'm going to add some yellow to this mix. Mainly because I do want um, some orange. And it doesn't look like I'm getting it. <laughs> so I'm just going to add some orange, I mean some yellow. One thing I like about polymer clay is you can suit it to your means. And I'm, I've got this rolled on a number three, but I also have this rolled on a number three. If you notice when you were looking at my fast forward, every once in a while my blend would get longer, and that's because I went with a, um, a thinner setting. When you're doing a Skinner blend or if you are 
um, trying to, uh, what am I trying to say? Trying to um, blend colors, like you're trying to mix colors. Start out at your thickest setting on the pasta machine and then go to the, uh, go down a couple sizes because the thinner your setting, the quicker your clay will blend. So let me go back. Again, I'm going to turn this back so I can do my uh, fast forward. And I'll be back. Okay, I still didn't get that vibrant orange that I wanted, but I did get some orangey color. So I've got this on a number three. I'm going to go back to the thickest setting. And I'm going to fold this because it's so long. I'm going to fold it into fourths. And I'm going to roll it through with this end first. So that I'll end up with a longer piece with the yellow on one side. Okay, so that was at a number one. Now I'm going to go down to a number three. Okay, and it's getting longer. This is probably the better side to show you. That's another thing I wanted to tell you about your Skinner blends. When you're rolling your Skinner blends, as you go through the process, you're going to have a pretty side and an ugly side where the things, blend, you know, the edges go together. I like to always put the uh, ugly side to the inside when I'm doing my blends. So I'm going to, that was at a number three. I'm going to go down to a number five. This is pretty thin, but I do think I'm going to go down one more latch, one more setting to number seven. Okay, so now I've got a really long piece of clay, and I do believe I'm going to cut off some of this red. That's just more red than I want. So even though this isn't a true red anymore because I've mixed some yellow with it, I'm still going to put it back with that. So now I'm going to roll this. I'm going to lay it out where I can roll it. I'm going to fold this in half because it's got such a raggedy end. Make sure there's no air. And just push up on the edges till you get a little roll started. And you can use your fingers, you can use an acrylic block. Just roll it up a little bit and then stop every once in a while and push in your ends. And roll some more. And push in the ends. And just keep doing this until you've rolled the entire strip. Let me show you what we've got. 
I'll cut this side. But you'll see now we've got a yellow, sort of orange, to a little bit of red. Alright, now you're going to probably think I'm crazy. But now I'm going to wrap this in, this is Lagoon. And this is on the thickest setting. And I'm going to try to trim it just so I can make sure, see if I've got enough to do this. I hope I do. Do a straight edge. And this is the, this blue is I think I told you rolled out to the thickest setting, and it wasn't quite enough. So I'm going to cut off these extra pieces and just kind of fill in in the places where the blue didn't cover. And this one, let me draw, do a straight line there and just cut this triangle to fit in there. At this point, it's not really necessary to keep this neat. So now we have it wrapped in blue. And you can pick any color. I just happen to pick blue because it was there and I was thinking the red and the blue might make a purple as it goes and I'm going to wrap it in black now this black is on a number three so it's going to be rather a, th a thinner setting you don't want a lot of black just enough to define it want your black to meet. And clean off your table, your work surface, whatever you're working on. Let me get rid of my blue so it doesn't end up on anything. Cover up my black and my red. Okay, and then I'm going to just roll this. And when I'm doing this, I'm also going to press in the middle because I want to make sure that start in the middle and work yourself out to make sure that all the little air pockets that might have been in your first Skinner Blend plug, that it is all the air comes out. Ooh, this hurts my elbow. It's the first time I've done this since I've had shoulder problems, but now it's my elbow. I'll just use my left arm. But you want to stretch this out and we want to make it pretty long. You see this souffle clay is really easy to reduce. And I'm going to cut off the end ends. And then I'm going to cut this into pieces. I don't know how many pieces I'll get out of this. Let me get out my... This is... 8... 9 and a half inches. So if I do... 3 and a quarter... No, 3... I'll just do a little over 3 inches. Actually, I marked it at three inches. I'll just save that as an example. 
and I just marked them. I didn't cut them. And I'm going to put these together like this. And actually, I think I'm going to cut this in half. This might just be, I don't want it to be too long. About right there is half. So now I have six of these that I'm putting together. And I'm going to just press them together. You can see what's happening to them. They're getting long and skinny. You may have to pull these in the middle a little bit just to keep them the same length. Because this actually starts the reducing process. And you can take your roller and roll it a little bit to help keep the edges square. But let's reduce this a little bit more. Try to keep track. Of what I'm doing this time. I think I'll go to four inches. And I will allow to cut the, the ends off. So cut that end off. Okay, so that's four, so I'll cut it two. I'm going to put those side by side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to squeeze them together and start pulling. And roll them with my roller. off again. And I'm keeping these so you can see the progress. I probably ought to do it this way. So you can see the progress we're making. I'm going to do it one more time. reason I don't usually cut when I use the ruler is because the blade doesn't come all the way through. Alright, now here I'm going to stop. I am going to do it one more time, but first I'm going to cut this in half. That's two inches, so I'm going to cut it at one inch. And this time I'm going to put them together Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it down on some black and trim around it just so there'll be a little bit of separation here. This step is completely optional. I'm going to put Maybe that side together. I'm not really getting the effect that I wanted. But I will. And again, we're going to reduce this. And be sure when you reduce it that you're reducing out this way. 
always make sure that you can see this side and pull out this way. And make sure you pull the middle, too. Use your roller. Try to flatten your ends a little bit so you don't lose too much. You can squeeze. Lots of different ways to reduce a square cane. Okay, let me show you what I've got now. Can you see that? I may do it one more time. Cut it in half. Let me make it an even three inches. So cut it at an inch and a half. And put it next to each other this way. Make sure that you have And we're going to squeeze again. Now, I don't know if you can see, but some of the color is beginning to show through the black. And at this point it's okay, because I think I'm going to wrap the whole thing in black. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and condition a little bit more black clay and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got some black clay conditioned. I just love Primo clay. Look how nice and shiny it is when it's conditioned. Just going to cut that end off. You can see it's finer now than it was, but I'm going to wrap this in black. Let me cut a straight edge. Try to get it on there straight. I'm going to trim here. And I'm going to trim the back edge. Then I'm just going to wrap this. And just be sure you get your corners straight so that there's no air. And let me cut an end off to see what we've got. This is so soft. But you can see it's very, very fine. I probably should have stopped at this stage. But I wanted to see what it would look like. But it doesn't look much like a flame. I pretty much lost that. But... I can take this and take slices and line them up like this.
So I guess I won't make this a flame cane. I think this is going to be more of a static type cane. But you can put this and make it a nice long strip of canes and put it on a bracelet. See, I need about eight inches for a bracelet. So I need about three more slices. But then you can take them get a bracelet form. And actually I would just start right here and just lay them on the form. Get a straight edge before you put the next one. Oh, I don't think I've ever taken the film off of this one. I haven't. That would help. Sorry about that. It took me longer to get this film off than I thought because I have baked on this with the film on it and I think that made some of the film very, very thin because it must have pulled off on my clay when I pulled my clay off. But what I thought I would do is put a piece of black on here first anyway and make sure it's wide enough <clears throat> wide enough for your band. This is a one inch band. And I didn't cut this very straight. I didn't use my templates that came with the with the with the bank with the bracelet I should have but I didn't but I'm going to cut this off on each end and I'm going to just trim along the edges Excuse me while I'm out of the camera. I'm just going to let this clay drop into my black clay. And at this point, you don't have to be real neat, but it'd be less clean up later. If you can get some of the things trimmed now. to show you what I'm doing because we're going to put the other on top of this so it's going to stretch some more but this way if there's any breaks in the band in the canes it'll be covered with the black behind it and it, also I want to put a little do I have any of my little hoops out here where am I 
jump rings. I've got so many things here. Those are earrings. Here we go. I'm going to take some jump rings. These are six millimeter. And I'm going to press one, try to find the opening, and put the opening in inside the clay, but leave about half of it out. Because Primo clay is pretty flexible when it's baked, so I like to put a little... Uh, attachment here on the in the middle so it will stay on my wrist it won't fall off and they will attach to these try to get it in the middle I didn't do a very good job and again you can readjust these as you do now you can put your cane slices over top of the little jump ring and you can round this if you want as you go. And take a, make sure the edge is as flat as it can be. Put this together. And you can go back and trim up these edges or roll them or whatever. I kind of like the looks of this. I'm not sure exactly what it looks like, but I do like it. I try to alternate the directions of this little center line. See, that one goes out, that one comes in, that one goes out, so this one will come in. Just to add a little interest and try to get your seams together as much as you can. We'll smooth those out in a minute. This is going to make a really interesting bracelet. These two are stuck together. There you go. So I want this one this way. This is going to make a very interesting bracelet. It almost looks almost like an animal print, even though it's not. And you straighten out this edge. see how many more slices I need. What's left of this cane I will put in my Etsy shop if anyone is interested. That's what I'm going to be doing from now on is when I make a cane whatever is left over is going to go into my Etsy shop. Cut a fresh slice. I'm going to have a little bit of space left over. So 
but I don't think I'm going to worry with it. I think I'm going to just try pressing this down. Maybe I'll put a little strip of black. That's actually too wide. cover that end and cover the little jump ring. And then you can always refine. So I've got, oh, I don't know, two inches left of good cane because I've already trimmed off the bad edges. So that'll be a good cane for my Etsy shop. And take the blunt edge of your blade or any tool that you have to just kind of round this off. And you can take rollers, you can take a tool. You, I think I like kind of like the seam in between. I've got them together, but I don't think I'm going to try to blend those seams because it kind of adds to the interest of this bracelet. Sorry, I was out of frame. And what you can do, you can take a toothpick or whatever and go into this little jump ring Kind of clean that out before you bake it. Same thing over here. Just put a toothpick or your needle tool, something to make sure you've got enough space in the ring to hook something onto it. But I even like the way the edges look with that, you know, kind of a little rippled effect. I like that. So what you would do is go back and kind of clean up your edges. I might work on cleaning this edge up just because it's going to be... The others kind of look like they belong there. This one doesn't. But you want your clay to be, how thick is this? This is three sixteenths. Now what I would do here is I would take a piece of patty paper and put the smooth side down and just kind of burnish it and this will get rid of any fingerprints it'll get rid of any marks that might be in your cane but it might spread it out a little bit so we may have to work on the edges again but it just makes a real nice smooth surface You can use any kind of paper. It doesn't have to be patty paper. I just happen to like patty paper. And I move it and I try to use a different place on it for the next area because I've usually wrinkled it where it's where I've already used it. It's got little wrinkles in it. And I don't want to put wrinkles in my clay. But this will smooth out the surface. And 
you just go back and just kind of push a little on your edges because you want your edges to be fairly the same. See how this works. Yeah. Still have that rippled look and yet they're flat. Not bad for a mistake, huh? It started out being a flame cane and ended up being something totally different. Kind of a staticky type cane on a bracelet. Now I will bake this just the way it is. I'll put it in the oven and bake it. I always bake for an hour. And then when it's done, I just pop the metal piece out and I've got a place to, you know, a nice piece of jewelry to wear. Now the the bottom of this is going to be slick because it's going to pick up the grain from the metal. If you want a um, texture to the inside, you would go ahead, excuse me, bake this first, pop it off of the um, metal piece, and then put another sheet of black clay in here and texture it the way you want it, and then rebake it. Depending on my time, I'm getting ready to go to the beach, and I don't have a lot of time, but if I have time, I will come back and show you how to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to trust that you guys know enough to go from what I say. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I like, I kind of like this. Like I said, it kind of looks like an animal print, even though it's not an animal print. So, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will be back next Monday with another polymer clay video. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, my bracelet is baked, and I wanted to just show you how easy it is to take it off of the bangle. All you need to do is just to break the seal. If you find a place like on the, if you find the end, and hopefully the clay, there you go, just break that seal and it will come right off. Now this is one of the bangle sets that I got from Teresa Salgado. And it does come with these templates that match the, um, the cuff. So I'm going to use that to cut my piece to go around the inside. I should have done that with the with with this, but I didn't. So I'm showing you both ways: the easy way and the old way. Like pre tiny Pandora, and this thing is stuck. There we go. So there's my template, which is just the right size to go. Actually, this is to go on top, so we'll have a little bit left over. But see, the inside of it is not very pretty. It's just where it's stuck to the metal and everything. It's got little divots and stuff in it. It's just not very pretty. So I like to take another piece of clay and lay it on the inside. And just try to even up the edges because if everything is trimmed right this will be the perfect fit if it's not we can always trim it because this was a little bit different and just press another piece of clay in here now you can do all kinds of things with your center you can put a silk screen design on it If you want to put a design, you can use a, a rubber stamp. Uh, 
Oh, and something else I didn't do that I should have done because I'm putting raw clay to baked clay. And today I will use Bacon Bond because I've been using the Kato stuff. But let me go ahead and just put a little Bacon Bond in here and it doesn't take much. But just enough to coat the inside so that this raw clay will have something to stick to. Because raw clay will not stick to baked clay. Hopefully you already know that. Let's see, this is the side. And I'm going to try to get this back in since I had already cut it to size. And try to fit it on the end. I find it easier to do it on, you know, after I get the end on there to turn it on its side. And then you have your work surface to use as a flat surface. See how much that stretched because I pulled it out. But this doesn't have to be very thick. But you do want it to cover and go all the way to the ends. Cover up any little messes you might have. And being clay, it will stretch. And I like to round these edges so that it doesn't leave another seam. I don't know if you can see that or not, how it's smoothed. Well, like here. Here you can see the seam where the little thin piece is on there. But then when you press it with your thumb, that seam disappears. So the only seam you're going to see is the one for the one that's part that's already baked. And just make it, you know, fix it the way that you want it. You can kind of close up in here. Don't forget to use your little toothpick to make sure that this stays open. I'm sorry I'm taking so long, but if I'm going to put this in my Etsy shop, I want it to be good enough to sell. If I were going to just wear it myself, I wouldn't be so picky. That's fine. Now, what I'm going to do, if you remember my little sticky thing, I just really like this for texture. I'm going to take this and I'm going to press on the clay and get some texture in there. And it not only looks better, but it will feel better on your arm if there's a little bit of texture. Otherwise, it has a tendency to kind of stick. So can you see the inside? Just that little bit of texture makes a big difference. Oh, there's my, I'm saying my light was in the wrong place. And, you know, just look at it and make sure you've got the texture that you want. Now, you may choose to put a glaze on this, or you could use um, liquid Kato to um, give it a little bit of shine and, and finish it off with the heat gun. I may, may do that. 
I'm just rechecking after I've done the texture. I just want to check these edges and make sure they still look okay. And there we go. We'll bake this again. And I'll bake it again for an hour. I know it's just a thin piece of clay in here, but I'm still going to bake it for another hour. And then later, after it's baked, I'll hook a chain maybe and a little clasp in here. And there you go. It have a, but see, here it's open, and sometimes it has a tendency, because it's flexible, it would open up. But if you have just a little chain with a hook, in there it keeps it and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller but I'm going to go ahead and bake this again and this is it this is our mistake turned into a gorgeous bracelet so I thank you very much I appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch this video and I will be back again next week with another polymer clay video Video. My polymer clay videos are published on Monday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern Time. So let's just hope that uh, you'll get on a regular schedule and know that every Monday I'll have a video, unless I let you know ahead of time that I won't. So I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.